Hello friends, today I'm going to show you an example of React Axios. Well, this Axios keyword is used to fetch the data using async or await, or you can use it with then and catch, or you can use that, um, or you can use the uh, normal fetch keyword to retrieve data from an API. So now let's understand what is the benefit of using Axios. Well, here I have an example, and that's showing you how Axios is using uh, in uh, two different ways. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm using it with async and await to get the data. I'm using only axios.get, and I'm using only fetch without an axios. Right? So what, what is the difference? Now, if I'm using axios.get, okay, here, so that is simplifying the request process. In this case, axios.get, we, we perform a get request and automatic JSON passing, Axios automatically passes the JSON response. So you don't need to manually call the response.json as you would with a fetch, okay? And Axios also give you an, a better error handling ability and you can directly access the error message using error.message, okay? So with Axios, you will have all these benefits from a cleaner and a readable code structure okay now let's jump into the code and see that in action all right so as you know the basic setup for our react application was to run the program uh, to run the command npx create react app react axios one and then hyphen hyphen template equals to typescript as we are using typescript here and then uh that runs through and it creates the application so cd change the directory to the new application you just created and press a code dot and that's going to open your VS code with the application. All right, as we have on the first one, the default one is the app.tsx and app.tsx is loaded into index.tsx by default. So if we run this application, I'm going to see my first one that is the default view of app.tsx. So we will test one by one with Axios 1, Axios 2, and fetch. So Axios 1 is using the axios.get, and it has an API URL, which is uh, showing the general JSON, placeholder, typical code, and it's uh, showing a title and a body. Okay. And um, similarly, with Axios 2, what we are using is we are using the async and await along with Axios. Okay. So what happens when we are using the Axios along with async and await? Now, the first page that loaded is the default one, which says uh, this one, the React logo, which uh, uh, has the default React sign and uh, the one. All right, so let's change this one so that we can get into the Axios one. So in order to do that, I will make changes at the index. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I will just comment this one out with the app one, and we will use Axios one. Wait, what is the name of this component? Axios1. Okay, perfect. So Axios1 here. Okay, the build has completed. Now move back to our code and you can see that. Oh, my default text message that came from the API. That's reading some kind of uh, message in a different language. I guess that's Spanish. So where did it get this, this one from? If we go back to the Axios one, you can see that we are using the axios.get and this is getting your data from this API, the HTTPS, JSON, placeholder, and typical.com posts one. It's getting the first post from here. Now, it has a dot then and the response is, uh, the response is hold here and if we get any error so it will throw the error along with the uh, error message okay and we have a loading as well so if you refresh this page you're going to see a loading message as well all right so that's the default one now moving on to the second one what do we have in this one this one is using an axios.get along with the async and await so axios.get is placed inside the await keyword and that will give us an error free or uh, more easily handling code with async and await okay now 
running this one, we will make some changes in the app.ts, no, in the index.tsx. Um, here, I will mark it Axios 2. And small change, building the application. Seems like it got an error. Let's go and see what is this one returning Axios 2. Perfect. So what's wrong here? Okay, so I see. Here we did not import the Axios 2. And this one should be Axios 2. All right, after making these changes, let's go back to our code and see, wow, it got the second API data into our screen. Now, moving on to the third one, which has a fetch. This one is not using an Axios. This one is simply using the fetch keyword along with the dot then and dot catch to get our data. So we have this response where, in fact, we use the Axios. We did not have this response. Um, wait, let me check. Yeah, we had this one as well. Okay, so that's fine. Um, a fetch and uh, the dot then and dot catch to fetch the same kind of data from an API and show that on the browser. Let's call this one and see the difference. So here I will use rather the fetch from fetch. This one is probably the fetch s. Okay. So caps lock. Yes, we got this one. Now what's the error? Okay. So I will have fetch as here. Perfect. Compiling and I hope no more errors. Let me go back to the browser to fetch the data. And um, it's the same data. So fetch s has the same kind of data as we used in Axios. So it's, it's copying the same IP, uh, the same um, API, binding with, uh, yeah. If I change this to, you should see the changes here as well. Perfect. All right, so it's getting this one from FetchS. In order to work on that one, so you have to import FetchS from .fetch, and here inside the render, you mark the tag with FetchS. All right, so this is all about this video. I hope you understood what we did here. I'm going to put this, um, Put this codes in my GitHub and send the link in the description and share that with you so you can work around with it and get an idea of what is happening and what's not and how to make some changes on that one. All right, so that was all about this video and thanks for watching. Stay tuned, stay connected, and happy coding. Thank you.